welcome to the channel get rich if you are new to this channel please subscribe this channel by clicking a subscribe button and also a little bell icon so the, today the company we are going to look into belongs to indian foodware industry so first let's have a look at indian foodware industry so india is the second largest foodware producer of the world after china accounting for 9% of the world market with 22 billion pairs which is 2200 crore pairs among them currently india exports only 10% of the foodware produced with the domestic market being the major contributor of around 90% among the produced capacity only 10% is exported and the other 90% is domestic consumption on consumption front india's annual foodware consumption stands at 2.1 billion pairs and it is the third largest among globally after china and the usa and has recorded a healthy growth over the last decade so the indian foodware industry has a potential to grow near to 1 lakh crore by 2021 india is still an underpenetrated market because per capita consumption is only 1.66 per per annum among a global average of 3 per however developed countries average around 6 to 7 per per annum if you look at the export side india's share in global exports is just 2% compared to china's share of 40% thus presenting room for growth opportunities so footwear has evolved from being a mere necessity to an important fashion accessory consumers becoming more brand centric in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and also rural markets so aspirations for latest global trends has increased the frequency of shopping also if you look at the difference between organized and unorganized segment organized segment today caters to 45% of the market gst is propelling the shift from unorganized to organized segment so the company today we are going to look into is relaxo footwear so relaxo footwear limited is the largest footwear manufacturing company in india their products include rubber evs slippers canvas shoes sport shoes sandals school shoes and other types of footwear so if you have a look at their market share they have around 5 to 6% market share so they are the largest footwear manufacturer in india they have lot of value for money products so they are focusing a portfolio of mass apparel brands they are the market leader in the value segment so if you look at their revenues they did around 2410 crores of revenues they have a ebitda of 409 crores and pat of 226 crores they sold 17.9 crore pairs they sold they have nine brands they have eight state of the art manufacturing plants they are serving 50000 plus retailers through distributors they have 390 exclusive brand outlets if you have a look at their brands they have a portfolio of 10 brands including major brands like relaxo sporax flet and bahamas so these are their big brands so they if you look at their big brands which is spark x they they are a premium range of sports and canvas shoes sandals and slippers and we have flight which is fashionable and lightweight footwear and they have relaxo which is most popular iconic brand of hawaii slippers and they have bahamas which is trendy and fashionable flip flops these are the four big brands contribute to majority of their revenues so all the other are small brands which belong to minority of the revenue so these four brands contribute much higher proportion to their revenues and then they have school made so they have range of school shoes for boys and girls and they have boston which is for formal shoes for men and they have mary jane which is trendy footwear for women and they also have casual lizard which is quality comfortable shoes for men and they have kids pants so this range of colorful footwear for next generation kids the volume trend so in financial 2010 they are selling at around 8.4 crore pairs and it increased to around 17.9 crores in financial 2020 so it increased from 8.4 crores to 17.7 crores from financial 2010 to financial 2020 so they are doing nice increase with their volume but then we have to look into their average realization per pair if we then look into the average realization per pair in financial 2010 their average price selling per pair is 66 rupees 
it increased to 135 rupees in financial 2020 so they are increasing their realization from 66 to 135 which is also good thing because it will also increase their uh, revenues and also the profits as well let's have a look at their manufacturing facilities so they have nine state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities six in Bahdura, Haryana, two in Bivadi, Rajasthan and one in Haridwar, Uttarakhand. So the company's business process is managed through SAP and SAP HANA. So during the year, the company commenced commercial production at its new plant at Bivadi for manufacturing flip plus, which is Hawaii range of footwear. Their in-house design capability enables continuous product innovation as per consumer needs. In season launches with optimal product portfolio, 20% of the portfolio is restyled every year. So from their eight manufacturing facilities, they have a capacity to produce 7.5 lakh per per day. So since they have their own manufacturing, it helps to maintain quality end to end. So they monitor every stage of manufacturing process from designing to raw materials, production process, packaging and final products. So then if you have a look at their distribution network the company sells its products through retailers served through distributors retail outlets export and e-commerce or modern trade so they have around 50,000 plus retailers or multi-brand outlets they have 700 distributors 390 exclusive brand outlets then they are exporting to 40 countries and they have one overseas office in dubai but if you look at in detail about their distribution network they have higher concentration in the north if you look into their revenues from different regions 50 percentage of their revenues are coming from north 20 percentage of their revenue is coming from east and the rest from south and west so they have very strong presence in north and east compared to south and west they still have to go deeper into south because uh, the spark x their brand is doing well in south but the other products are not doing that good in south and west so as i said they have 390 exclusive brand outlets which is contributing eight percent of their revenues so their uh, exclusive brand outlets are not contributing much of their revenue so most of their revenues are coming from their multi-brand outlets so they have to compete with different brands in the same outlet so they have uh, exclusive brand outlets to showcase their products so if you have a look at the universe of retailers the endpoints for footwear in india was about 85,000 outlets and their presence is roughly around 50,000 outlets. As I just mentioned, they are exporting to 40 plus countries, but then their revenues from exports is just 4% compared to 96% which is coming from domestic consumption. So if you have a look at their uh, online presence, so they are selling at www.shopatrelaxo.com. They also have partnership with major e-commerce companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, Jabank, uh, Paytm mall or snap deal so they have a lot of uh, partnerships but if you look at their revenues how much of their revenues is coming from this online channel so around seven to eight percent of their revenues are coming from online channels so they are also doing a lot of advertisements with different celebrities so if you have a look at how much they are spending in advertisements it's around four percent of their revenues they are spending in advertisements due to nationwide lockdown overall demand for footwear is subdued but demand for open slipper segment has improved during the period However, due to restriction in manufacturing operations, fulfillment of such demand will be a challenge in short term. From their experience, the company stated that open footwear, which is PU, Eva, Hawaii, Bahamas, is in demand more than sport shoes or sporty sandals. So two-thirds would be the approximate contribution from these particular segment to the overall revenue. So they are seeing more of their demand in their in these open footwear categories. So let's have a look at their financials. So if you are having a look at their revenues in financial 2012 they are doing at around 865 crores in financial 2020 they are doing at around 2411 crores of revenues so it increased from 865 crores to 2410 crores in eight years so if you look at the compounded sales growth in 10 years they were doing around 18.85 percent in five years it's 14.21 percent in three years it's 11.18 percent if you look at their ebitda and ebitda margin so their ebitda margin is expanded from 12.1 percent in financial 2014 to around 17 percent in financial 2020 and if you look at the ebitda it increased from 146 crores in financial 2014 to around 408 crores in financial 2020 so they are doing quite good and then 
If you have a look at their net profit, it increased from 65 crores in financial 2014 to around 226 crores in financial 2020. If you look at their compounded profit growth for past 10 years is 28.28 percent. For past 5 years is 21.43 percent. In 3 years 13.98 percent. So they are also growing pretty good in the compounded profit as well. So then if you have a look at their profit margin, it increased from 7% in financial 2016 to 9.4% in financial 2020. The reduction in raw material cost also helps them to increase their margins. So it's mainly depends on the crude oil prices. Now the crude oil prices is a bit subdued. So it's helping them to have increased margin. But I expect them to maintain this margin going forward. If you have a look at quarter to quarter, in quarter 4 financial 19, they are doing at around 636 crores in quarter 4 financial 20 they are doing at around 541 crores if you look at the EBITDA margin it increased from 15% to 17.8% quarter over quarter the PAT margin increased from 8.6% to 9.6% if you are having a look at their dividend they are giving dividend of about 7.2 crores in financial 2016 and they gave 31 crores in financial 2020 if you are looking at the dividend as a percentage of face value it increased from 60 percent to 125 percent in financial 2020 so they are consistently increasing their dividend as well which is also a good thing and then if you have a look at their balance sheet their total asset increased from 174 crores to 1841 crores if you look at their borrowings they have a borrowings of 71 crores in march 2008 and in March 2019, it's 112 crores. In March 2020, it's around 167 crores. So they don't have much debt compared to their total assets. If you're also having a look at return on equity, 10-year average is 24%, 5-year average is 23.28%, 3-year average is 21.08%. So last year, their return on equity was 18.73%. So then if you have to look at their return on equity over the years, financial 2016, they had around 28.4% return on equity. It reduced to 19% in financial 2020. If you look at return on capital employed, it was around 31.8% in financial 2016 and it reduced to 24.8% in financial 2020. And then if you are having a look at net debt to equity, it's 0 0.4 in financial 2016, it reduced to 0 0.02 in financial 2020. So they are reducing their debt as well. So it's almost a debt free company. So it's a very, very good thing. So they are deleveraging their balance sheet. So if you are having a look at the net worth, it increased from 367 crores in financial 2015 to 1106 crores in financial 2019. So if you are having a look at their free cash flow, in the past 9 years, they were doing at around 50 crores of free cash flow. With an exception of 1 year, they were doing at around 90 crores. But if you compare their free cash flow with their size, it's uh, not that good. If you are having a look at their shareholding pattern, the promoter holds at around 71%, mutual fund is holding at around 6.4% and the public they are holding at around 19.6%. So if you are having a look at historical promoter holding in Relax of Footwear Limited, it decreased from 74.3% in March 2018 to 71% in March 2020. If you are having a look at historical FAA holding in Relax of Footwear Limited, it decreased from 4.6% to 2.7% between March 2018 and March 2019, but then it increased to 3% in March 2020. It's not a good sign because FIIs are offloading the shares. If you are having a look at historical DIA holding in Relaxo Food West Limited, 2.2% holding in March 2018 and it increased to 6.1% in March 2019 and it remained almost the same. It reached at around 6.4% in March 2020. It's, it's, it's a bit of a good sign compared to FIIs, DIAs are buying and not selling. So if you are having a look at number of mutual fund buying, holding or selling or the number of holders over the years. So January 2020, 42 mutual funds holding Relaxo Food were limited and it increased to 50 to 56 in May 2020 and it reduced to 33 in June 2020. So the number of holders is reduced from 56 to 33 from between May 2020 to June 2020. That's uh, not a good sign as well. If you are having a look at promoter salary, Ramesh Kumar Dua, he has a salary of around 13.72 crores. Mukund Lal Dua, he has a salary of around 13.72 crores. The promoters combined, they have at around 28 crores of salary compared to 175 crores of net profit. I feel it is a bit high compared to the percentage of net profit so they are having a bit higher salary so that also concerns me a bit 
let's have a look at the peer comparison so the nearest peer for relaxo is beta so let's compare relaxo and beta with some key parameters so the revenues relaxo is doing 2410 crores beta is 3056 crores and the market cap of relaxo is 15777 for beta it's 16335 crores net profit relaxo is doing around 226 crores beta is doing around 329 crores if you look at the p ratio relaxo has a p ratio of 70 beta has a p ratio of 50 price to book ratio which is 12.4 for relaxo 8.63 for beta so relaxo is quite expensive compared to beta valuation return on equity five year average 24.04 percent for relaxo 17.49 percent for beta ROCE five year average 28.4 percent for relaxo 26.8 percent for beta if you have a look at sales growth five year average 14.2 percent growth for relaxo 7.25 percent growth for beta net profit growth five year average 21.43 percent growth for relaxo 10.6 percent growth for beta if you have to compare the growth the growth is a bit slow for beta and uh, relaxo is growing pretty fast and if you have a look at the return on equity ratios and return on capital employed ratios so the relaxo is having a good ratio compared to beta and the valuation of course relaxo is having higher valuation because of this uh, fast growth so let's have a look at valuation of relaxo footwear limited if you have a look at the price chart of relaxo the growth was very huge so it went up so high and the current valuation it is quoting is around 70p i feel it's highly valued because of the indian consumption story so then if you have a look at one year forward pe it increased from 40 in october 2015 to currently it was somewhere around 60 to 70 or even 80 so it is quoting at extremely high valuation at the current price then let's compare some of the key valuation parameters so if you look at pe in financial 2020 it was estimated at 65 so currently it stands around 70 the price to book is around 11.6 currently it's around 13.4 if you look at ev to ebitda it's around 36 ev to sales 6 the parameters are showing that the company is highly valued let's have a look at their revenue and net profit projection and try to value them for revenues financial 2016 they have a revenue of around 1668 crores in financial 2020 it's 2410 crores I am estimating for financial 2021 their revenue growth is going to be minus 15% because of this corona crisis and the lockdown the revenue for financial 2021 is going to be 2049 crores with 15% degrowth for 2022 it's 2561 crores with a revenue growth of 25% for 2023 2945 crores with 15% revenue growth if you have a look at the net profit they were doing at around 120 crores in financial 2016 and 226 crores in financial 2020 and in financial 2021 it's 164 crores with a degrowth of 27 percentage financial 2022 it's 256 crores with 56 percent net profit growth in financial 2023 it's 294 crores with 15 percent net profit growth so let's value the company with the current valuation which is pe of 70 in one year it's 462 rupees in two year it's 722 rupees in three year it's 831 rupees with a price cumulative growth of minus 27 percent for one year 14 percent for two year 31 percent for three year but i feel the current valuation is high you can justify this high valuations but i am not comfortable with this high valuation so i am estimating the price target with a p of 45 so for one year it's going to be 297 rupees two year is 464 rupees three years is 534 rupees with the price cumulative growth of minus 53 percent for one year minus 27 percent for two year minus 16 percent for three year with this valuation i am not saying sell these shares it can quote on higher valuation it can quote on lesser valuation as well but i am not comfortable buying this share at the current price if you are already having this share you can continue to hold of course i am not recommending any stock this is my personal opinion you have to do your due diligence before buying or selling any stock but at the current price i will not buy this share so that's all for today thank you for watching if you like this video like share and comment and please hit a subscribe button and also a little bell icon so thanks for watching and have a nice day Bye bye